Canada over 48 hours in September 2016. Single contact reported. Flanker, single contact. Initially, we start off the mission. We're orbiting. Trap line, lead arm, beam east. I don't know what the enemy is necessarily going to do. It can very quickly turn unsafe. You know, when you only have two or three seconds of reaction time, it can get dangerous. 30,000, hostile, two contacts. Trap line, single group, bullseye, 35061. In September 2016, 60 camera crews across the nation captured 48 hours with the men and women who keep Canada safe. These are their stories. There's danger every day. It's the 9th of September, it's Friday. Usually, as a detective sergeant, we're dressed in a suit. This morning is a little special because we got a search. Uh, that's why I'm dressed in uniform. Don't make too much noise. The family's sleeping. It's an important day because it's the end of a case. We will uh, probably arrest someone, uh, maybe say victims. Sergeant Detective Christian Lachance works to stop the sexual exploitation of minors. This job is important for me because uh, I feel that I can make a difference for children. That's why, that's why uh, I'm doing this. He's part of a project to crack down on child prostitution, human trafficking, and child pornography. Okay, so, bonjour tout le monde. Merci d'être là ce matin pour cet autre rendez-vous matinal. L'enquête nous amène chez un récidiviste dans le nord. The offender has been under police surveillance. Euh, on a un, un, un dossier dans lequel un individu a été ciblé euh, pour avoir fait du pornographie juvénile. Donc, euh, l'équipe euh, est en train de se préparer pour justement aller faire une perquisition chez cet individu-là. Every detail is planned. Everybody knows what he's doing right now. That's how we succeed. Oh, my partner. Bien-t'en. In an operation like this, we go in the morning, we're going to create surprise. here on my legs is a, it's called a G-suit that uh, will plug into the aircraft and then when we start pulling G, which uh, causes blood to leave the brain and go down into your legs, uh, this will inflate with air, which pushes pressure on the legs to push the blood back up. If I go up in my Levi's, what happens? You start losing your color vision and then you'll actually lose your vision totally as the blood leaves the eyes. And then if you keep going, you'll go unconscious. Four Wing Cold Lake is home to Canada's largest fleet of CF-18 fighter jets, aircraft capable of stopping enemy attacks from the air. You know, everyone sees the movie Top Gun and they think, oh, the pilots just walk up to the jet, jump in and take off. And no, it's, that's not the case at all. These technicians are coming in, you know, a couple hours before. We're getting ready to fly. They're doing all their checks. And we trust them with our lives to do that job. But even with safety checks complete, there's still danger. You're stepping uh, to the jet to go for a mission. There is always risk involved with that. 10 RCAF pilots have lost their lives in CF-18 crashes. In the fighter pilot world, it's always critical for us to keep training so that if we were called upon by the government tomorrow, we'd be ready to go out the door. We are defending Canada 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. Takeoff is quite exhilarating. You've got about uh, 32,000 pounds of thrust pushing the aircraft forward. It's a nice kick. Today, the squadron is engaging in a simulated air-to-air -air dogfight 
an especially dangerous but necessary training exercise. It's hard work. You're in charge of operating a $50 million aircraft, and you're, you're making decisions that are life and death. The men and women in today's mission will defend their country and put their lives on the line at a moment's notice. There's always real-world dangers that can occur, mid-air collisions, even in a training environment. Just keep your hands in your pocket. Three, four, Hello, Gertrude. Ten for it. Advise when it's open again. We parked just north of the office here, just trying to see what outfits you're going by and not coming in as required. On Alberta's busiest highway, drivers of heavy commercial rigs must report to vehicle weigh scales for safety inspections. About another two feet. Perfect. When things do go wrong, uh, they can have some serious consequences. I've been to accidents where wheels have come off and collided with other traffic. Fatalities resulting from that. So there's definitely Six some issues. Level, six, eight, nine, four. 10 for it, thanks. Oh, they got a driver that's failed to report. He is commercial, but he did not come into the way station. Our job is to focus, to detect, and remove unsafe vehicles from the highway. Thanks, Patrol. Reason I'm stopping is in region not coming to the way scale. Okay, do you get your driver's license registration insurance on you there? So we're going to escort him back to the scale. He's newly commercially registered. And he had uh, completely forgotten that he had to report. We're just going to do a quick walk around the vehicle, make sure everything's up to par, load secured. Oh, jeez, that's it, is it? So one concern we have here is if you look at the tie down, it's actually not connected into the frame, so that's an issue. So that slips out, it's gone, and then we have no tie down up here, so that'll have to be addressed. Okay, sir, just notice one of your tie downs on the front. It's actually not fully underneath your frame there. So I've allowed him to park the trailer out back for the night, and he's gonna make arrangements to get that truck safety. Okay, any questions? All right, I'll let you get things organized then. I get satisfaction when I take an unsafe vehicle off the highway and knowing that I potentially saved a life or a serious collision from happening. Our suspect is supposed to be alone at this time in the house. In Quebec City, police are waiting for a suspected child pornographer to return home so they can arrest him. There's been surveillance. We know that there is some kids out there. They're probably going to school. They leave before 8. We are trying to avoid, on every search, the presence of uh, children, family members, because we don't want to shock them. The team stops nearby. Natalie is the, the team leader. She, she's our boss. Uh, Francis is the main investigator, so he will coordinate everything. You got Oliver, that will be him that will interview our suspect today. Fait que ça a, ça a un impact, le voyagement jusqu'à la salle euh, d'entrevue est important aussi. On discute de plein de choses. Ça peut enlever des tensions. Ça peut. Euh, J'apprends à connaître la personne aussi. Hein. Donc, voici, vers la maison, donc, on... Fait que tout le monde embarque dans leur véhicule. Je vous donne un go sur les ans. At this moment, uh, the tension is getting a little higher. We know that our possible suspect is home. It's 100% uh, sure that we will make contact with him. All the officers are coming. They're just going to the house. Christian will inform the unit if anyone approaches the house during the raid. If we're not ready, we can hurt someone, or we can be hurt too. Prepared for the worst, the unit silently moves to the suspect's front door. This program may contain mature subject matter. Parental discretion is advised.
Quebec City, police raid the home of a suspected child pornographer. The officers are taking control of the house. Parfait, super. The suspect is very nervous. When we come out with a suspect, we don't want to show him out to all his neighborhoods, so uh, the car is closed. The suspect is quickly removed and taken to police headquarters. Now, the challenge of interrogation begins. Rescue Center, Victoria Radio Position. Be careful. OK. You guys want to go in first? Ten thousand feet above Cold Lake, the Royal Canadian Air Force engages in a simulated dogfight, sharpening the combat skills needed to defend the country. In the Canadian forces, we hold a ready alert because we could be called upon to fly by the government. Aircraft are divided into two teams, blue and red. The blue team must defend its territory from simulated red air attacks. It's just like the real world. I don't know what the enemy is necessarily going to do. The blue team is on the lookout for encroaching enemy aircraft. We're orbiting, trying to pick up enemy contacts that are in the airspace that we're trying to defend. And we also have the ground control radar that's also doing that. It's, it's the whole team effort. Trap line is lead arm, beam east, 33, 10,000. Can very quickly turn unsafe. They spot red fighters coming from the north. Single contact reported, flanker single contact reported, fish bed. 30,000, hostile, two contacts. When you only have two or three seconds of reaction time, it can get dangerous. The blue team attacks the red fighters. Trap line, single group, bullseye, 35061. 3-2, target. The blue air team destroys the red air targets before they can drop their bombs. The red air pushed uh, south to try and get through us three times, so we were able to fight them off. It ended up being a successful mission. Whether it's enforcement of a no-fly zone or protecting Canada from terrorist attacks, the RCAF maintains a state of constant readiness. If we can't take off and fly, we can't defend Canada's airspace. It's a lot of hard work, personal and mental and physical cost involved with it, but it is, it is the best job. We can wear casual civilian clothes, so jeans and a t-shirt. I also carry a radio. And are you armed? Absolutely not. Uh, my partner's armed, so that's all I need. I'm not a police officer. No, I'm not. I'm the mental health worker part of the team. Sarah Burton Shaw, a mental health worker with St. Joseph's Healthcare, is partnered with Constable Mike Logue, a nine-year police veteran. Together, they respond to mental health crises. The disconnect between having police officers come to mental health calls. So now we're trying to bridge that gap by having a mental health expert on scene doing a rapid mental health assessment and helping me come to the best solution that I can. Everybody who's calling in has an issue. It's their worst day. Remember that when that, that man jumped off the building? And we were working with the family uh, so right after. Well, uh, yeah. Worked, and that worked. was really probably one of the saddest calls I've ever been on. To sit there with this family, because it's all they wanted to do with them. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? I didn't have the answer. Nationwide, one in three Canadians with mental health and addiction issues have contact with police. Or two. Sarah and Mike are dispatched on an urgent call to back up another mental health team. We're heading out to uh, Form 47 call. This person, it appears, has missed their medication. And the doctor's trying to get hold of them. They haven't shown up. So now the doctor has issued a form which directs police to pick up this person and take them to the hospital. This person may, when they get unwell, be a risk of themselves or other people. And that's the tricky part of the whole thing, is that you never really know what's going to happen until you're there. Officers already on scene provide disturbing information. The person bought and purchased four long axes for a tiny apartment. The concern is obviously that he's carrying around these axes now. 
If the person is armed, the potential for violence is real. He's missed medications, missed his treatment, and you know, as as all this information is put together, our concerns are increasing. Oh, well, sir. This program may contain mature subject matter. Parental discretion is advised. The following events took place across Canada over 48 hours in September 2016. It's always that piece of you walk away yep. if something happens. Oh, yeah. We feel that we can't just come back another time. It's become much more urgent for us. Concerned that a mental health patient may be stockpiling weapons and not taking his medications, rapid response teams received permission to enter his apartment. We're just checking. We want to make sure everything's OK, sir. Hello. Yes, there's not in here for now. OK. The officers confirm no one is inside. What we will do is we will walk around in the area and we'll try to come back again and also uh, have other units in the area keep an eye out for him. This is just one of 10 crises they will confront on a typical 12-hour shift. I've been working in psychiatry for 31 years. There's huge stigma attached to mental illness. I think that's why people wait a long time before they get assistance because they're so fearful as to what's going to occur. Today, there's good news. The gentleman that we were looking for, the other rapid response team located him and did take him to hospital. All right, see, we're on route now. We have a female who is just threatening to jump so off the balcony. Jump the balcony. Okay, 10 4 we're not far off. They just want to hold the scene. It's a full range of emotions that goes with the job that we do. It's challenging sometimes, but the biggest motivator for me to do this every day is just the ability to be able to help people make their lives better. 911 emergency. Do you need the police, Amazon, or fire department? Customer assault at this time. No weapon seen. In Quebec City, investigators remove evidence from the home of a suspected child pornographer. Captain Mario Vezina, head of the Child Exploitation Unit, monitors the interrogation. Le, le rôle de Olivier, c'est de mener l'interrogatoire. C'est lui qui avait assis avec la personne à la salle d'interrogatoire. Karine, sa job à elle pour euh, aujourd'hui, la salle de régie. While Sergeant Detective Karine Boivin looks for connections between the interrogation and the confiscated evidence, a data extraction specialist scans the seized hard drives. So what he did on the search was to make a sort of pre-scan of the material. So he found evidence of juvenile pornography. Everything that we found will be classified later. Karine informs Sergeant Detective Olivier Simon of the evidence as it emerges. There are videos, and in the end, it's little boys, and little girls. The difference is really between the two. You have a lot of girls, a lot of girls, less than 12 years old. OK, that's good. I would say that we have a lot of stock on place. We have a lot of... It's like 100 videos of children. Thank you. Good. You can flash it. Now, Olivier will confront the suspect with the evidence. This program may contain mature subject matter. Parental discretion is advised. As the interrogation of a suspected child pornographer continues, police classify seized evidence to build a case. I'm just classifying some material that we found on a search, checking photos and videos to see if we have juvenile pornography. The unit follows a strict protocol when screening evidence to protect the mental health of the investigators. Francis is there because we're trying to uh, not be alone. Uh, we talk to each other and uh, we keep our mind elsewhere. In videos or, or photos, we can see victims in our country and uh, if we can uh, identify them, we're going to search for them and try to interview them. Downstairs, 
Sergeant Detective Christian Lachance finds out if the case is strong enough for prosecution. Yoli, how's it going? Ben, je pensais qu'il était de craintif, là. Oui. Qui sait qu'est-ce que ça en est, puis euh, qu'il a déjà passé par, par là, ben, difficile, mais euh, il m'a dit certaines choses, des admissions. Il n'a pas tout dit parce qu'il il voulait garder ça pour lui. Mais en général, ça a bien été. Euh, la preuve qu'on détient jusqu'à présentement euh, est importante, donc euh, est suffisante selon nous, selon évalu notre évaluation pour une comparution. Mais euh, la dernière personne qui va apprécier ça, ça va être le procureur de la Couronne qui va, qui va regarder le tout. Cette personne-là a des enfants. Et puis, ce qui nous amène à poursuivre notre évaluation du dossier avec la DPJ, la Direction de la protection de la jeunesse. Donc ça, ça se poursuit en parallèle. When I get home, I just forget what I did in the day. I don't feel the case personally. Ce travail qui est exigeant, ça demande beaucoup de, 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 de rigueur de la part de nos gens, mais c'est très satisfaisant parce qu'on sait qu'on est capable de faire, dans le cadre d'une opération, la différence dans la vie d'une personne. So last step of the day, we're gonna put the case to the Crown Prosecutor for the court. And uh, after this, it's Friday, end of the week. So uh, turn the switch off and uh, go home, have fun with the family.